Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Hiroshi Miyasaka, a professor in the Division of Frontier Material Science uh, in Graduate School of Engineering Science. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you here today is optical single molecule detection and its application. Uh, this topic is closely relating to the uh, chemistry, material science, and biology to some extent. Uh, maybe uh, you know microscope and the microscopy. Microscopy is one of the techniques to obtain the image of small materials and has been used for the investigation of structure and the dynamics of natural and biological and artificial tiny systems. Now we can find many kinds of microscopes such as optical microscopes, electron microscope, probe microscope and many kinds of microscopes. Among many microscopes, I think uh, optical microscope is the most popular one, and even in the elementary school, students can use the optical microscope uh, in the lecture of science or uh, some yes, uh, investigations in the uh, school. But uh, at the same time, we know that uh, we cannot see atoms and molecules by the optical microscope. This is because uh, its diffraction limit restricts the spatial resolution of the microscope. Uh, D in this equation is a spot size on the microscope. D is uh, represented by this equation, and lambda is the wavelength of the uh, light used for the microscope, and uh, NA is the numerical aperture. This is a, a property of the lens. In the optical microscope, uh, we use, uh, usually we use the uh, visible light uh, in the wavelength range of 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer. Uh, so the uh, uh, spot size in the microscope is just like uh, uh, something like 200 or 300 nanometer. But when we use electron for the, uh, in the electron microscope, the wavelengths of the electron, uh, this is dependent on the velocity of the electron, but typically uh, sub nanometer size. And the, because the size of atom and molecules are in the range of nanometer or sub nanometer, so the electron microscope can detect a molecule or atoms directly. But the optical microscope cannot see the molecule and the atom directly. Uh, this slide shows you one of another uh, microscopes uh, called a uh, scanning probe microscope. Uh, in this case, uh, we use a tiny and thin needle, just like it, and then uh, it scans on the surface of the material. In this case, uh, we could get a sp high spatial resolution. Okay, this is one of the examples uh, obtained by the scanning tunneling microscope, and uh, this uh, on the surface of this material, uh, these molecules are uh, lining in this way, and the probe microscope uh, can see how the molecule is aligning on the surface. On the other hand, <coughs> in the microscope, optical microscope, yes, we could get a biological image. In this case, I'm showing uh, one uh, yes, image coming from the plant, of cell of the plant. And this is a transmission image, and we can identify the uh, structure inside. And this is a fluorescence microscope image. And the fluorescence microscope is uh, uh, one of the optical microscopic techniques. And we can excite some molecule inside the cell, and we could get uh, uh, some fluorescence. In this case, chlorophyll is a molecule emitting the light. So in the optical microscope, can see uh, various kinds of materials, but uh, the spatial resolution is uh, not so good. In this case, uh, several hundred nanometer, this is restricted by the diffraction limit. Uh, this table shows you uh, the specifications or comparison of the scanning probe microscope and optical microscope. Uh, spatial resolution of the uh, probe microscope is much, much better than the optical one. And the temporal resolution is determined by the uh, yes, uh, scanning rate in this case, uh, typically uh, longer than one second. But in the optical microscope, when we use a very, very short laser pulse, uh, we could get a higher temporal resolution. 
And this uh, column shows you the systems that can be detected. Of course, a probe microscope can see only the surface or interface, but of course, as you can easily see, uh, yes, optical microscope can detect inside the solid, liquid, and so on. And in addition, if we uh, combine this technique with the spectroscopies, uh, we can um, identify, or we can assign uh, what is involved as a chemical species. As I just told you, yes, optical microscope can detect various kinds of materials, especially for biological uh, system. Uh, it is not so easy to use electron microscope and uh, yes, probe microscope. So, uh, although the spatial resolution is not so good in optical microscope, but various advantages exist in the optical microscope. So, uh, many researchers have been uh, doing effort to improve uh, the resolution, special resolution in the optical microscope. And this slide shows you uh, some many kinds of the uh, yes <coughs> microscopic techniques uh, so accumulated to now. And uh, yes, uh, we can now get the typical resolution of 10 nanometer uh, or 20 nanometer along the z-axis. We can get the such images by using optical microscope. And this type of techniques is used as a super resolution uh, in optical detection. And for the yes, development of super resolution, yes, uh, we can uh, we know that uh, three researchers got the Nobel Prize in two, uh, 2014. And uh, yes, uh, Dr. Bezehi, Dr. Hell, and Dr. Merner uh, got the Nobel Prize in chemistry. In uh, also, yes, we have many kinds of super resolution techniques, but I cannot uh, yeah, say all of the things to you because of the time is restricted. So, as one of the super resolution techniques, I'm going to introduce uh, one method called as a localization of the fluorescence image. Uh, this picture shows you the uh, <coughs> fluorescence image uh, coming uh, in this solid polymer film. Each bright spot is uh, uh, correspond to one molecule emitting the fluorescence. And uh, as I told you, yes, the size of the, each spot is uh, almost 20, uh, 200 or 300 nanometer. But by applying, yes, Gaussian function, in this case, two-dimensional Gaussian function, uh, we could get the uh, position of the center of this bright spot. This is a, a place where the molecule locates, and in this experiment, uh, the accuracy of the uh, determination of the center is just uh, almost one nanometer. In this case, uh, one <coughs> uh, pixel uh, corresponds to 33 nanometers. So we could get very high temp uh, spatial resolution by using this type of the analysis. Uh, by combining this localization technique and the usual and the normal fluorescence microscopy, uh, we could get uh, very high spatial resolution. But before uh, talking to you about uh, yes, uh, <coughs> uh, super resolution, I'm going to introduce you the fluorescence microscope. A normal fluorescence microscope, uh, yes, uh, <coughs> image of the normal fluorescence uh, microscope can be obtained in this way. Uh, please imagine this is the uh, material you want to see. Uh, this is a pentagon shape. And we put fluorescence dye onto the, uh, this material. So yes, fluorescence dyes are attached in this material selectively. And we uh, excite this uh, material and the fluorescence will be obtained. But each fluorescence molecule can emit a light. But uh, as I told you, uh, this size is diffraction limited. So uh, the diameter of this circle is about 200 nanometer or 300 nanometer. As an integration of all the molecules, uh, what we can get as image is just like it. So uh, we couldn't get this pentagon shape by the normal fluorescence microscope. But by combining uh, uh, fluorescence microscope with uh, uh, localization method, uh, we could get a higher special resolution. Uh, in this case, uh, we use a special dye, fluorescence dye. Uh, usually, yes, this dye is usually non-fluorescent, fluorescence off state. But uh, as this molecule can be switched to the fluorescent on state by switching light. So, and uh, in addition, uh, this dye can be switched again to off state. 
So uh, this is a normal process image, and I told you we couldn't get the super resolution. But when we put uh, uh, this special dyes onto this material, and uh, only a few molecules are switched on, and then we could get the localization because the number of the dyes uh, in the on state is very small. And we could localize this position. And then uh, we introduce these dyes, these dyes into off states, and uh, we could, uh, yes, uh, switch to on, off to on again. So in this case, we could get uh, this type of, mo these molecules can emit the light and we can localize uh, these positions. And uh, yes, we can repeat these procedures and finally, uh, we could get such uh, images. Uh, this picture shows you the normal fluorescence image and the super resolution image. As you can easily see, uh, when we apply the localization method, uh, we could see a very fine structure of this material. But the localization method uh, cannot be, can be used uh, to obtain the still image, but also we can apply this localization method to uh, elucidate the dynamic processes. And this is called a single molecular tracking method. And the time evolution of the fluorescence image uh, will be analyzed in this method. For example, as I told you, yeah, the size of each uh, fluorescent spot is uh, in the size of a few hundred nanometer, but we can localize the center of this spot. And the center corresponds to the position where the molecule locates. And if we measure the time evolution of the fluorescence image, uh, we could get the motion of the uh, fluorescence molecule. And uh, yes, uh, this video shows the uh, yes, fluorescence image of many fluorescence dyes in polymers and 16 micrometer and 16 micrometers in size. And you can see the molecule is uh, moving uh, translationally and uh, yes, uh, <clears throat> coming back to the uh, same position. But anyhow, uh, we could get the localization of the molecule and uh, we can uh, get the information of the dynamics. In this uh, case, uh, a single molecule starts to moving and um, uh, yes, going, 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 and then coming, uh, yes, <coughs> uh, yes uh, translational motion uh, can be obtained. As this figure shows you the trajectory of one molecule in polymer films. Uh, you can see that the molecule moving from here uh, comes in this way and in this way, and uh, yes, in this way. But uh, you can find uh, this specific position where the molecule is not moving so much. Uh, this graph shows you as yes, time of the observation and the step length. Each step is correspond to this one. Uh, in other words, this is the velocity of the molecule. And uh, ap apparently and actually around here, uh, you can see the molecule is stopping. I don't know why stopping, a molecule is stopping. Um, yes, in our case, uh, we are walking uh, in the street and if we meet a friend, we will stop and talk a little bit and then moving again. But I cannot think, uh, I cannot think that the molecule has a friend around here. So, anyhow, yes, some heterogeneity, nanoscale heterogeneity in the solid host uh, material exists. In anyhow, from this experiment, uh, we can get the property of the host materials. And these uh, <coughs> uh, trajectories uh, can be yes, analyzed by using this type of equation, einstein smolkowski equation, and uh, large D means that the dimension of the diffusion. In this case, we can assume that the uh, diffusion uh, could be regarded as, uh, <coughs> as <coughs> two dimension. But anyhow, from analysis depend, uh, <coughs> based on this equation, uh, we could get the diffusion coefficient. And in the actual analysis, uh, we use the image, every image and the position, X position and the Y position, and we could get the graph of the uh, relation, uh, of relating to the uh, dimension of the uh, diffusion coefficient of the material. 
In anyhow, yes, for example, this uh, figure shows you the trajectories of molecules in the translational motion, and this is an analysis based on this equation. In anyhow, from this analysis, we could get the uh, quantitative uh, data on the uh, diffusion of the gas molecules in the solid states. And this slide shows you the uh, short uh, summary of the, my lecture today. And I did tell you about uh, optical single molecule detection and its application. Uh, first, I did show you the super resolution in optical detection. And then I told you uh, localization of the fluorescence image. Super resolution image of tiny materials provides a very important information uh, which was conventionally uh, cannot be obtained by the conventional method. And I introduced you the single molecule tracking uh, for the elucidation of the dynamics. Uh, from these investigations, we could get the information uh, in the materials with high spatial resolution, uh, typically in the range of 10 nanometers.